Hello and welcome to Medical News Network, your trusted source for the latest in the medical and dental information you need to know. I'm Mike Wigenstein and thanks for joining us. Today we brought our cameras to Columbus, Ohio to the offices of Dr. Don Slabog to find out about two things that, well, until recently I never would have thought to go to the dentist for. Sleep apnea, snoring, and TMJ, or the dysfunction of the jaw joint that causes headaches, migraines, dizziness, fibromyalgia, a plethora of things. So, if you'd like to be better educated, or maybe you suffer from some of these, my advice, sit back, get comfortable, relax, and we'll see you in a few minutes. Welcome to an educational and comprehensive discussion with today's top medical experts. Your trusted source for the latest in medical news and information. You're watching Medical News Network. Hey, Mike. Hi, Doctor. Thank you, first of all, for allowing my crew and I to come out today and spend some time with us. Oh, my pleasure. Um, we're going to talk about, and obviously you're going to let me meet some patients, you're going to give me a tour of your office, and we're going to talk a little bit about sleep apnea and, and TMJ, uh, which is the dysfunction of the jaw joint. Right. You have a practice that's pretty proliferant in, in children's dentistry. You do a lot of orthodontics. Is that what led you down this path? It's not normal that you find a dentist. In fact, there's very few in the country, I checked, that's how I ended up with you, that treat these properly. How did you get into TMJ? Uh, I got sleep? into treating TMJ and sleep um, through the orthodontic door. It was from treating children with um, um, jaw problems or uh, malaligned jaws, realizing that we could prevent TMJ problems by treating children when they're younger. Um, they got me into then treating adults and finding did out Did you fall by following these kids? And I mean, obviously, I've talked to you a little. We talked about most orthodontists, they call it a four by extraction. They'll mm -hmm. pull four teeth. My, my niece went through it. Mm -hmm and then they shrink everything down. We now know that a lot of that leads to headaches and other problems down the road. Did you, in treating the children and watching them, the, I mean, it's a pretty big step for you. A lot of dentists don't, they don't address the jaw at all. And a lot of these kids grow up and have terrible problems. What, what was it in there that you saw could make this big difference? Um, well, part of it, Probably the, the big thing that got me into TMJ was my own problems, my own orthodontic treatment that led to TMJ problems myself. And then not wanting my children or any of my patients to go through the same thing. So you've actually had these problems? Yes. This is a personal experience? Yes. Okay. So did you have extractions when no, you were No. Fortunately, I did not have four bicuspids extracted. Um, I had what's called a cervical headgear where you've got this bow going around um, into the back. Those. Uh, right. back teeth braced against the neck. Um, it actually shoves the upper jaw back. Um, I fortunately did not have teeth taken out too, but I still feel like and, it led and to my And you're going to explain problems. today that that forward jaw being back creates a lot of these problems. It can, yes. Okay, now, what do you find, and I'm going to ask your patients, but what, when I found out dentists treat this, um, and I will tell you, it sounds a little, uh, for lack of a better word, you know, we're snake oilish kind of. I mean, it's like we're going to fix you with no pain, you know, no medicines, no surgeries. What do patients normally say? when you meet them and start talking to about them? Do they, are they receptive to it? Are they usually a little concerned? Initially, they are skeptical. Um, a lot of them have already been to 10, 12, 15 other doctors um, for their headaches, neck aches, back aches, whatever their particular symptoms need, uh, happen to be. Um, and uh, so far, maybe all they've been offered is medicine or surgery. So by the time I'm the 12th or 15th doctor they have gone to and have not had any results or any relief or any hope, um, they're very skeptical of what I, I'm doing, especially when it seems so simple as using appliances. It does seem pretty simple. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to meet some of your patients, but first give me a tour of the office. Great. So I had headaches, dizziness, and neck pain, those, and ringing in my ear, um, and, and pain in my ear. And in fact, I had been put on antibiotics several times in like three years because my doctor thought, you don't really have an ear infection, but we'll put you on antibiotics anyway. So it never really helped. So headaches, dizziness, neck pain, ear pain, those were my primary symptoms. And so I got a mouthpiece uh, that I would wear during the day and one at night. And um, within two to three days of wearing that mouth mouthpiece, all of my symptoms were gone. It was awesome. It was the first time in about three years I hadn't had any dizziness. It was really great. All right, Doctor, if you would take a minute and just show me or tell me exactly what TMJ is. Your patients make it sound like when you explain it, it's a very simple thing to understand. So tell me about it. Well, the area we're talking about is right here. TMJ stands for the temporal bone of the skull, which is here, the socket, and M for mandible, which is the lower jaw, temporal mandibular joint, T 
TMJ. So everybody has TMJ. Everybody has, hopefully everybody has two. Okay. One on each side. All right. You have a right one and a left one. Okay. Okay. This part um, that fits up into the socket, like of a ball and socket joint, is called right. the condyle. Okay. And it's the part that actually moves when you open and close your mouth. And okay. Then, okay. Seated behind the condyle is the ear hole. And between the ear hole and this condyle is a spongy area full of blood vessels and nerves. In that little bitty space right yes, there. Yes, right back here. They okay. go to all the head, neck, and facial muscles. All right. So what is TMD? Is it uh, that joint doesn't work right? T TMD or temporomandibular dysfunction, TMJ disorder, they're kind of all synonymous, is when this joint is not functioning properly. Most of the time it's when the lower jaw is back too far. This condyle is pushed backwards. It's sitting on those blood vessels and nerves. Um, causing the uh, muscles that they supply to go into spasm, decrease blood flow. Um. Okay, now I know you have some photos you're going to go over here with me real quick, so let's pull one out. Let's look at the normal TMJ first. This is just uh, a view of the skull. So what, what is the blue? The blue is a cartilage disc. Sitting between these two bones right. in, a, in a normal situation is a cartilage disc. It's like a pillow in there. It okay. provides shock absorption, lubrication, things, lets things function smoothly. All right. Um, and there's good spacing behind that bone. Right, you want good space behind the um, the condyle, so that where the blood vessels and nerves are. All right. Um, and through all the opening and closing movements of the jaw joint, that dish, disc should stay between those two bones. All right. Now let's look at the abnormal joint. Okay. Um, more than likely, when the the lower jaw gets pushed back, that disc slides forward. Is that why sometimes when you open your jaw you hear a popping? Is that the bone going over that disc now yes, instead of sitting the, on it? Yes, it's that disc getting back between the two bones. As you open and the, then sometimes you hear a click when you close again as it pops back off. Okay, and now that disc being forward obviously like, is like a little wedge and it pushes the bone backwards. Yes, and it functions causes, as a wedge. Okay. And it's held there by ligaments that have gotten stretched. Wait, so now, and I see that they, they have the longer ligaments. Can go back to the normal one for just a second, and we're going to see that the ligaments look. You can see. Oh, yeah, they're nice and tight. Nice and I tight, see that. fibrous. Okay. What are some of the symptoms? Obviously, if my jaw pops. Now, I know people that have a popping jaw that's popped their whole life and they don't think they have a problem, but that's just telling you it's like your car making a funny noise. Something is wrong. Correct. Something's out of alignment. They've got a dislocation within that jaw joint. The disc is out of place. What are uh, some of the other symptoms? Uh, you said headaches. But headaches, neck aches, back aches, shoulder pain, ear pain, ear ringing, ear stuffiness, um, sinus so problems. So, the people that their ears ring all the time? It very well could be that their jaw's in the wrong position. And you said also maybe things like fibromyalgia, carpal tunnel syndrome. I mean, the list is, and it's all because of the nerve. Right. And and what do you think, I mean, why do you think most people don't, again, get checked for it? Do they not know to come to the dentist? Do they not, do they go to their regular family doctor who doesn't know anything about it and gives them a pill? Like, wh why? Um, that's, that's a lot of it. A lot of people do seek treatment for chronic headaches, um, but the medical community tends to treat them either with drugs or surgery. And if they come um, see, you're not going to, you're not going to do surgery, you, you, no. you, you just diagnose people and tell them that this is a problem or not. Right, right. We do no surgery. I don't prescribe any drugs. Well, uh, I spent uh, a great deal of, of time in my early 30s ill all the way through, I'm 40 years old now, for about the last 10 years, very ill. Um, series of headaches, um, just a chronic fatigue, um, just in bad shape generally. I went uh, and had massage therapy. People told me I had uh, a pinched nerve or something wrong with my neck. Uh, other doctors told me I had severe sinus problems. I had MRIs, CT scans, multiple. In fact, I've had at least six different MRIs done. And um, some thought I had a brain lesion or something wrong in that, in that uh, realm. It, um, it was like throwing darts in the wind. It really didn't have a whole lot of, of um, methodology to it. I didn't see a pattern of, of what, whatever specialist I went to, that would be the problem I had. Interestingly enough, my wife um, did a lot of research and uh, she came upon TMJ online.